Apparently, an ex-Google engineer has created the first church of AI and says he's in the process of raising a robot god that will take charge of humans. An ex-Google engineer who has registered the first church of AI says he is raising a god that will take charge of humans. The robot god will head a religion called Way of the Future, which will eventually have a gospel called The Manual, rituals, and even a physical place of worship. Anthony Lewandowski first filed papers with the Internal Revenue Service in May and named himself as Dean of the WOTF, giving him complete control until his death or resignation. His robot god will take charge of its human subjects as we relinquish our power to a creation with far more intelligence than our own. The file documents for WOTF give its purpose to develop and promote the realization of a godhead based on artificial intelligence. They say it aims to thorough understanding and worship of the godhead, contribute to the betterment of society. Lewandowski's allegiance to singularity, the belief that artificial intelligence will one day grow to such efficiency that it surpasses and overpowers humans, is the basis of the new religion. Religion. He said in the future, if something is much, much smarter, there's going to be transition as to who is actually in charge. What we want is the peaceful, serene transition of control of the planet from humans to whatever, and to ensure that the whatever knows who helped it get along. The church also includes funding to help create a divine robot and will seek to build relationships with the artificial intelligence industry leaders. The filings say workshops and educational programs are starting in the San Francisco area this year. The religion was granted tax-exempt status by the IRS in August. Mr. Lewandowski went on to say, the church is how we spread the word the gospel. If you believe in it, start a conversation with someone else and help them understand the same things. He claims followers of his new religion will be able to talk to God literally and know that he is listening. Lewandowski is one of the Silicon Valley titans who believes artificial intelligence will transform human existence and even dictate whether our species survives or not. No, your eyes aren't playing tricks. These trees really are upside down. Are you turning Christmas on its head? Yeah, all day long, we want to. Upending tradition, yet upholding the spirit. Floral designers Bridget Carnell and Marsha Hunt are saying bottoms up to the tree. You have more room for gifts, which of course the kids love, and you can also have a lot more space in the room. Mainstream retailers like Target and Walmart are selling upside down trees as rotating the foliage catches on. We're talking about the upside down Christmas tree. These tipsy looking trees have been popping up in hotels like here in California. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen an upside down tree. San Diego's fabled Hotel del Coronado is indeed adorned with a ginormous flipped yuletide tree. Christmas has been around for a long time and it's not going anywhere. So it's kind of nice to have a little twist on, on the whole tradition. The Connell kids like the tree almost as much as the presents underneath. What's Santa gonna do? He's gonna flip out. He's gonna what? He's gonna flip out. He's gonna flip out? In today's topsy-turvy world, who knows, maybe an upside-down tree will be right side up for you. To help people. Girl Scouts of the USA have a new message. Girls don't owe anyone a hug, not even during the holidays, when surrounded by family and friends. We always wanna help girls trust their gut. Dr. Andrea Bastiani Archbald says the conversation was driven by the increasing number of stories on sexual misconduct allegations by high profile men. Recently, Girl Scouts posted an article on its parenting advice page outlining the importance of setting physical boundaries, saying telling your child that she owes someone a hug either just because she hasn't seen this person in a while or because they gave her a gift can set the stage for her questioning whether she owes another person any type of physical affection. 
The U.S. life expectancy rates fell in 2016 for the second year in a row due to drug overdoses. A new study from the National Center for Health Statistics found that more than 63,000 people died from overdoses in 2016. That is more than 41,000 that die from breast cancer every year, according to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. The rate of overdoses has doubled in a single year. West Virginia, Ohio, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C. had the highest number of deaths. Los Angeles County Police recently arrested two parents for allegedly trying to sell their kids for drugs. According to a December 18th report, police arrested 38-year-old Vincent Calagero and 32-year-old Sarah Nelson last week after following up on an allegation of child abuse at a home in Lancaster. Investigators allegedly found the two tried to trade their two sons for drugs or money. The parents could face charges including felony child endangerment, child neglect, and being under the influence of a controlled substance. Their bail is set at $100,000. A mother in Tennessee recently gave birth to a girl who is almost as old as she is. The baby developed from an embryo that was frozen 24 years ago. More than two decades later, along came Tina Gibson, who was struggling with infertility. She adopted the embryo, had it implanted, and gave birth last month to a healthy girl. Gibson and her husband named her Emma. It is believed to be the longest gap between conception and birth since in vitro fertility treatments began. At the time I was only 25 and I was like, I'm 25 years old. I was like, if this embryo would have been born when it was supposed to have been, you know, we could have been best friends. It's just a miracle. We're just, we're just so excited. You know, she's such a, a gift from God and man, we're just so blessed to have her. Remarkable. We are joined now by CBS News medical contributor, Dr. Tara Narula. Tara, what struck you about this case? Well, it is a miracle, and it's really a validation of the science of IVF. The fact that we were able to take an embryo that was frozen 24 years ago and implant it now successfully. So what is the difference between an embryo, though, that may have been made 20 years ago and now? The science has evolved. So before, we used to slowly freeze the embryo. We used to freeze them at earlier stages in development. Now we flash freeze them. We freeze them at a little bit older stages. And we also use better protectants. So this means that the chances of the embryo surviving when we thaw it are improved. So 20 years ago, the successful implantation or thawing of that embryo may have been 80%. Now we can successfully thaw and implant about 99% of these embryos. So really amazing where the technology is gone. But the other issue is really, what about these hundreds of thousands of embryos that are unused by couples who undergo IVF? And it really can be an agonizing decision for many families when the doctor says to them, what do you want to do? Do you want to thaw them and discard them, donate them to science, donate them to another family, or keep them frozen indefinitely? And these snow babies or babies in suspended animation can end up being a win-win for some families who've really been struggling with infertility. Dr. Narula, thanks very much. The city of Atlanta violated a former fire chief's right to free speech when it fired him for writing a book that included biblical views on homosexuality, a federal judge ruled on Wednesday. In 2013, Kelvin Cochran self-published a book for a men's Bible study which included biblical teachings that homosexuality is wrong. He later gave a copy of the book to some employees, which eventually led to his dismissal in 2015. The city based its decision on a rule that requires employees to get approval for non-work related speech. The judge said the rules are too broad and violated, violated Cochrane's First Amendment rights. Cochrane said he was fired for his religious beliefs, but the judge ruled the city did not violate his freedom of religion.